For those of you who have been following some of my previous videos, you will know that I was in the UK in Cambridge for my masters and then for work. And now I'm back home in the United States. I think I left at a pretty good time regarding the whole COVID situation in the UK um, that's currently happening. And I also needed to put some distance between myself and Cambridge personally. So I'm back in my room at my parents' house and I have some time before I start my new role as a data scientist for Merck. It's a large pharmaceutical company and I'll be moving to Boston, but that'll be a separate video. So now that the whole job search process is over and I can put on my 2020 hindsight vision glasses on, I wanted to make a mini series documenting the steps I took and what I realized during the process of becoming a data scientist. So getting a data science job is, is hard, full stop. I applied to almost 100 positions and either got rejected or never heard back. So I'm, I'm really grateful for the offer that I got and I wanna do my best to share my experience for those of you who may be in that position right now who are watching this video. So in this video, I wanna talk about one of the initial dilemmas that I faced and I'm sure many of you guys uh, have faced similar dilemmas when submitting job applications and that is whether or not to submit a cover letter. If you decide to click out now, then at least take this one message away with you. A cover letter is optional. Keep it that way. Don't do it. And here's why. I've distilled three reasons why you shouldn't, and I'm calling them the three A's. Apathy, average, and ammunition. The truth is, many recruiters don't read cover letters, and if they do, certainly not as carefully as you might expect. Without hard numbers to back this up, I still think it's plausible if you consider the total volume of applicants for a given data scientist position. Oftentimes, the hiring managers are data scientists themselves, and they have to carve out time from their busy work weeks to engage in the hiring process. More often than not, they're not going to be reading through tons of cover letters and, sp and spending that time. Anecdotally, I've made it through the second and third round interviews when I didn't submit a cover letter. So take that with a grain of salt for whatever it's worth. And this kind of brings me to the next two points. The first is average. Unless you somehow write an amazingly compelling cover letter that is so convincing and so persuasive that the hiring managers would do anything to meet you, then your cover letter is likely going to come off as average and fall short. There are only so many cover letter formats out there, and it's pretty hard to write something compelling and short that a hiring manager could read in under a minute and go, wow, we need to, we need to hire this person. And that brings me to the last point, ammunition. A less than stellar cover letter will only provide ammunition for hiring managers to highlight your weaknesses and find reasons not to hire you. When companies post a data scientist position, they often have a very specific ideal candidate in mind already. One with a specific set of skills who can solve a specific set of problems that the company is currently facing. Use the resume to allow recruiters to fantasize about you as an ideal candidate. A cover letter more often than not will highlight that you're not actually the perfect candidate that they want. And even if you aren't the perfect candidate, your goal should be just to make it to the next round of interviews where you can actually talk about, um, you can actually talk to the hiring managers and, and show some of your soft skills and how you can be a good fit for this role and for this company. So that's it. I want this advice to be short and sweet. Don't write a cover letter. It's risky. I mean, you can, no one's gonna stop you, but just be aware that you're going to have to write something extraordinary. And also keep in mind, writing cover letters can be time consuming. You want to apply to lots of jobs because in some sense, this process is a numbers game. So save yourself some time, keep applying, and your skills and experience will be wanted by someone. I promise. Don't give up and best of luck. If you thought that content was useful, please leave a like and subscribe to see the rest of the mini series where I'll be covering the resume building process and the interview preparation process. And I'll see you guys in another video soon. Peace.